There's one more key function concept we have yet to discuss, which is the return statement, returning values from a function. We talked about functions that take inputs, and then on the diagram I had, if we go back a couple slides, I have this arrow indicating output, but right now our functions aren't returning a value, they are printing a value out, and there's a big difference between the two. If we take a look at one of the built-in methods, any of them, how about hello.toUppercase, so the toUppercase method, when I run that, the console prints out hello, and we see the text hello, but that's only in the console. It's just being helpful for us to immediately see the return value. If I paste that into a file and I run this code, refresh the page, we see nothing. This code is run and to uppercase does return a value, but it's lost forever. We're not printing it, we're not capturing it. What we would normally do is one of those, either print it out. Most likely though, we just put it in a variable. const scream equals hello.to uppercase. We refresh, now scream has a value stored in it. So this returned an output to uppercase, returned a value, we captured it in scream. So printing something to the console is entirely different than returning a value. When we're working in the console, they might seem similar, but there still is a significant difference. If I run that code again, hello.to uppercase, notice this little arrow I get here. It's pointing the other direction. This signifies I'm looking at a return value. Now, if I console.log the same thing, hello.to uppercase, it's printed out differently. This is an actual console.log. I don't have the arrow. This is a return value. So return values are extremely useful because we can capture them in a variable. We could pass them to another function Remember that most of the time in applications that we create later on in this course and in the real world, we don't print much to the console. Any given website, if you open the console, maybe there's a line or two that a developer left in there. Or sometimes if you go to a website like Facebook and we open the console, we have a message here. In this case, it's to prevent people from running code or something that is fraudulent or scammy or sketchy. If someone told you to copy and paste something here to enable a Facebook feature, it's a scam, blah, blah, blah. But other than that, we're not usually console.logging things unless we're debugging or trying to test something out. Most of what we do when we write functions is we return a value and we use that value somehow. Console.log is just useful when we're starting out. We haven't talked about how we manipulate a web page, how we change HTML, how we display content. So for now, we just show it in the console. But when we have a function, console.logging something instead of returning is not a substitute. If we take a look at this add function, add x and y, it console.logs x plus y. When I call it, if I refresh my page here, add one and two, it prints out the value three. But if I try and store that in a variable like const sum equals, if we look at sum, it's undefined. There is no value returned from this function. It prints something which is better than nothing, but it doesn't actually return a value. There's no output. So let's change that. Let's add in returns to our functions. All we have to do is use the return keyword. So return and then some value. We can have an expression. This will evaluate first and then be returned. So if we do that, add x and y return x plus y, run my code again, add four comma five. In the console, we see nine, but that's not actually being printed out. It's just the Chrome console showing us a return value. And if I save that to a variable, const uh, total equals add four comma five, we look at total, it now stores the value nine. So we return something from the function, which we can capture later, which is what I did here. There are some rules to know about returning. First of all, you can only return one thing from a function. That doesn't mean you can't have multiple return statements, but when you actually return something, there needs to be one value. So if I wanted to return x and y for some reason, instead of the total, I could use an array and do x comma y, or I could do a string where I add x inside and y inside, but I can't return two separate values. 
So I can collect them in something and return that, but I need to return one thing. So I said we could have multiple return statements in a single function. I'll show you an example of that now.